StockCast. My name is Alex, and I'm very excited and honored to introduce to you our guest, CEO of Lucid Motors, Peter Rawlinson. Peter, thank you so much for joining. Great to join you, Alex. Thank you. And uh, so a lot of the questions that have been generated for this interview, it's very, obviously very and highly anticipated, uh, was generated not only by myself, but retail investors that follow me on Twitter and across the whole internet. So uh, I believe that the retail investors really have these questions and really have it on their hearts. And uh, I am very excited for your responses as well as they are as well. So first off, electrification is becoming a main focus in the automobile industry, with many well-established companies rotating to the EV sector, along with EV startups starting to become more in the public eye. What sets Lucid apart from the others? Gosh, that's such an all-encompassing question. I hardly know where to start, Alex. Um, Look, let's, let's try to break this down. Uh, let's say uh, we, we cover the product, uh, the technology, and maybe the company and the team. Uh, we, we, we're entering the luxury EV market with the car behind me. Lucid Air is overtly uh, a luxury offering, but we're doing that in a design sensibility, which is very much inspired by the state of California. It's understated, overtly so. Um, it's, um, it, 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 it's really what we term post-luxury, uh, and it's distinctly different from the sort of luxury offerings you see from today's grandee marks, which from a personal perspective, I find them to be rather ostentatious, uh, particularly some of the interiors. So we've got this very understated, deliberately toned down, more Bauhaus inspired look, very much inspired by California design sensibilities, uh, in our luxury offering. And then what underpins that is our technology, which is 100% in-house. And a great uh, measure of that is our range. Uh, we have uh, certain versions of Lucid Air will be over 500 mile range. Now, the way we're achieving that is through high technology, 100% in-house. Because let's face it, anyone can achieve dumb range by stuffing a whole bunch of batteries into the car, uh, making the thing heavy, unwieldy, unprofitable, uh, less legroom, all these, these, these bad attributes. That's what I term dumb range. So we're achieving the range with as much range as possible with as small a battery pack as possible. And that's environmentally responsible. Uh, it's smart, it's what I term smart range. But this is what the planet needs. This is where we burn less uh, fossil fuels, we burn uh, less ele electrons to go down the road. And how do I measure efficiency? I measure that in miles traveled per kilowatt hour. And we're achieving around four and a half miles per kilowatt hour on an EPA cycle. And this is very different from some of these big numbers that are, are cited on a regular basis now in the EV space. Uh, we're not saying 500 uh, kilometers range, and we're not measuring that on a WLTP cycle or an NEDC cycle. This is 500 miles in an EPA cycle. And I think that is the litmus test. And that is the new, the new uh, benchmark. And we're doing that through efficiency with in-house battery technology, which actually powers the entire field of the World Electric Racing World Championship. Uh, our, our, our packs power every single car on that grid. Um, with miniaturized uh, drive units, motor, inverter, ultra high tech, and those drive units, the miniaturization I'll get onto in a moment, we're able to achieve uh, around nine horsepower per kilogram, wow. which is quite exceptional. It's nearly three times what we're seeing from close competitors. And yet those units are super efficient. We have an over 900 volt architecture. The modern EVs are all gonna go ultra high voltage. We're seeing that with Porsche Taycan over 800 volts, Hyundai's rising, raising the bar now, coming up to 800 volts. And we're launching with Dream Edition, which will be 924 volts. Wow. And that gives us the efficiency. But there's a, there's a whole other dimension to this car where really the, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And this is the space concept. And, and Alex, it's very experiential. I talk about the space concept. You can something you have to experience for yourself because we have a car which is more compact on the outside 
and much more roomy on the inside. Often people see pictures of our car from the inside and assume that it's some big lumbering limousine. Actually, our car is in its footprint is more compact in terms of length and width, not just than a Model S, Tesla Model S, but it's more compact than a Porsche Taycan. And why does that matter? Because it means that it's usable, eminently usable in a big city. It's easy to park. It's easy to maneuver, but it gives it great driving dynamics. Um, you know, many years ago, I was chief engineer at Lotus Cars. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Lotus is all about compactness, lightweight and agility and handling. And, and, you know, I'm really nuts about this kind of thing. So what we've got is this great fusion of uh, you know, what have hitherto been uh, mutually uh, exclusive attributes, um, compactness and agility to give sports car like driving experience, mm -hmm. but with an incredibly large interior, we've got more interior length and legroom than a long wheelbase S class Mercedes. And we're doing this through the miniaturization of our powertrain technology. And that's giving us this space concept. This is a new class of car. So that's what the technology does. And then also I point to the team and the company. You know, um, this is uh, the, a huge challenge to get a, a, a to, to build a car company from scratch, to build a brand, to put a world-class EV into production and to do that from effectively nothing. It's only been done once before. That was Tesla Model S 10 years ago. And I'm blessed that so many of my uh, previous Tesla Model S team have come here to Lucy to join me to make this happen again. And this is the team that knows how to do this. And I think that there's a big differentiator also uh, with Lucid that so many of these, these companies we see in the startup space, kind of they're almost a sort of vanity project of one particular individual. And it's all about uh, uh, some one person in that company. I think that Lucid is truly a team endeavor I recognize the brilliance of the team that I surround myself with. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, the, the, the face of the company in many ways, but Lucid really is a team camaraderie and a team effort of brilliant engineers and designers making something that's going to make the world a better place. Absolutely. And that's, that's really what, what makes it so attractive because as a good leader, a leader surrounds himself with people that are even more knowledgeable. Like you can be very knowledgeable and you obviously have a history in engineering and you've helped with Tesla in the past, but it's always go so far. If you're going to be the CEO and the leader of a brand new company and really try to make your footprint onto, into the world, you have to surround yourself with the great team. So that's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. That's you, know, you know, Alex, I always say my job is to um, surround myself with brilliant people and then I can be the dumbest guy in the room and then I can, <laughs> I can, I can exit stage left. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so that was brilliant, brilliant question. Uh, brilliant answer. So uh, the second question, uh, you really brought them up, Mercedes. So with many other automobile makers unveiling electric vehicles for the luxury sector, such as the recent unveiling of the Mercedes EQS, which is coming fall of 2021, how does that alter the landscape for Lucid and other players in the space? Well, I, I am just thrilled that Mercedes has the foresight and, and the, 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 uh, the commitment to launch EQS. Uh, this, is, this is really great news. I totally welcome it. Hats off to Mercedes. And, you know, uh, particularly Mercedes, the company that actually effectively invented the car in the first place. <laughs> and this engineering powerhouse, uh, you know, of all car companies, Mercedes-Benz coming now into the luxury EV market with EQS. Hats off to Mercedes. Well done. I'm thrilled and chuffed to bits. But... Um, the other side of the coin is those who know me, I'm a fiercely competitive engineer. I want us to have the very best technology in the world. I'm driving the team on a daily basis to do that. Uh, cut us to the core, we're a tech company, totally committed to making the best engineering. And, you know, I can't wait for um, not me to determine which is, the, which is the better proposition, but for the journalists who test drive, and the, 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 the ultimately the customers who determine uh, w which car they prefer. And, 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 and I can't wait to see that the road test, EQS versus Lucid Air, bring it on, can't happen soon enough. And I can't wait for the journalists to get behind the wheel of our car. 
Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be kind of like back in the day when uh, Ford and Chevy or Ford and GM, you name them, just coming together against each other. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. And it, it's not only just the sector itself. It's really the overall uh, EV sector. It's just the way that you're seeing all these companies come into one and realizing that uh, the rotation into electrification, you can't, it's either you evolve or you're going to be left behind uh, and, and change the world. So that's great. Indeed. So last, uh, the next question, what are the latest estimated production and distribution start dates for the Lucid Air? Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna, to uh, start production of Lucid Air, as I've stated publicly, in the second half of 2021. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, bring what I hope will be the very best car in the world to market in that time frame. Uh, we're pushing like crazy to make the, the car the best quality possible, and it will be that uh, quality metric which will determine the precise date in that window. Uh, right now, we're bringing together anecdotally about 3,000 parts from 250 suppliers from right around the world, and each car we build, we're endeavoring to improve the quality on a step-by-step basis. And when that quality is right, we'll pull the trigger and declare a start of production. Absolutely. And I said this in, in previous videos, I'm not sure if your team has seen it, but I said that Lucid really doesn't, like you guys do not have, um, you guys cannot mess up on this first decision, especially coming into luxury. You can't. And like when Tesla was at the beginning, when they were unveiling, that was early. That was early marks. They had some issues going on, um, battery issues, explosions, um, just kind of fault, faultiness. You can't do that now with, the mark is already set. You have Tesla okay. already and you're going into the luxury model, a uh, luxury sector. If you're going to come into luxury sector and you're going to people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars onto your, onto your vehicle, you cannot mess up. So I understand. Um, I obviously you have spoken to not only your team, but also people in Churchill coming and talking. And I do understand the move of waiting a little bit, making sure everything is perfect because you can only make a first impression one time. If you don't make that first impression, well, no one's going to come back to you. Yeah, absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. I mean, when Model S was launched um, uh, nine years ago, nearly, uh, I think everyone was so blown away with the product that the EV could be so awesome that a lot of slack was cut for the quality. And the market is very much more mature this time. We're heading into the luxury segment. We're going to be Compared with EQS, that thing will be built like a Rolex watch. No, it will be built like a Mercedes Benz. Damn it! And, <laughs> and this is this is a one shot deal. You're right. Yeah, and and it's brilliant. So I I think not only myself but many other shareholders will understand that uh, that you were originally starting for spring, but if you need to wait a little bit, a couple months, it's understandable. It's not that we're not here for the short term. We're here for the long term. That's right. So we've talked about this, uh, and you have talked about this on the unveiling for Lucid Air. Um, has there been any conversations with other companies for Lucid to acting as a third-party OEM uh, for the likes of Jaguar, Honda, BMW, Toyota, etc.? Oh yes, actually, we've had a number of approaches even this year, and um, I'd love to do this. Uh, it's not been me overtly proactively reaching out to anyone. It's been uh, some companies have approached us, and we are actually currently having some 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 dialogue. Uh, with one, one or two companies, um, but nothing uh, tangible yet. Remember, my focus is getting Lucid Air into production right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to have your hands in too many cookie jars, and then you fo forget what the main focus is. So Indeed. understandable. Then you get, to get your main product done, taken care of, because if you focus on any other things, you're not going to be able to balance it all out. So clearly, the main focus right now is Lucid Air, Lucid Dream Edition, um, the touring, grand touring, you name it. But with Lucid's Project Gravity SUV, and very, a lot of people are very excited for that, currently in a prototype phase and set for production and, and distribution in 2023, mm -hmm. has Lucid considered producing trucks or commercial vehicles in the future at all? Uh, we haven't considered that, but I wouldn't rule it out for the, part of the future. I think that our powertrain is... Uh, really um, very well suited to a whole range of applications. And this transcends not just uh, uh, passenger cars into trucks, but into other technologies. I, mean, I think I can see agricultural applications. I can see heavy 
uh, equipment applications. I can see aircraft EV tool applications. Uh, you know, we've got um, a gravimetric um, energy density in our in our energy battery pack system, and a, and, a, and a gravimetric power density in our drive units, which are unsurpassed. And, and, and that's going to reach a whole range of applications. So I'd love to be able to uh, do something like that sometime in the future, but it's not a part of our immediate plan. Absolutely. I understand. And with the battery that you have, a lot of it, it's any, any place that it can go. And a lot of, uh, a lot of attention has been going on with uh, delivery vans in the future. And if it's not you, I could see that the companies could come to you for your batteries because um, a lot of commercial vehicles, they not only run one to five hours, they go potentially eight to 24 hours and they need to have a battery that's very efficient. So I could absolutely. see the batteries that you generate could definitely have a high demand. Well, absolutely. And I think that, you know, if you look in the commercial space, what really matters is payload and minimizing the weight of the battery pack. And this is where efficiency really comes to bear. Efficiency um, provides so many benefits. It reduces the carbon footprint of the vehicle. It reduces the mass requirement of the battery pack. It would increase the payload of the commercial vehicle. Uh, it also even increases rate of charge. Wow. Yeah. Especially with your uh, partnership with, uh, with um, I forget, Electrify America. Yes. Uh, having the power to be able to fully charge. Yeah. So as you expand and expand your, your production, when do you estimate Lucid will be capable of providing a vehicle at or below $25,000? Oh, right. I've been asked this a number of times. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we can do that for another seven or eight years, even if we wanted to, even if our shareholders wanted to do, because, you know, that sort of marketplace, that sort of product is notorious. It's high volume, low margin product. And here is the, the great dilemma, you know, Alex, because really, I really want to have a meaningful impact upon the world. I think that we're facing an environmental crisis and we need mankind to transition uh, on, on a large scale to sustainable mobility. That's what the world needs. I wish we could be starting with a $25,000 car, not a car which is Dream Edition 161000 There's a reason for that that many people... Uh, don't understand. There's this great paradox that almost the more expensive the car is to the customer, the less cost it is to the company to design and put that into manufacture in the first place. Now, let's look at two examples here. Let's compare a Rolls Royce anecdotally with, say, a product like a Volkswagen Golf. Now, the Rolls Royce costs a lot of money to the customer, but it's made in tiny numbers largely hand-built in a small factory with relatively simple, uh, low-volume, low-cost tooling. For the company, that is a relatively small investment to put this high-price car into production. Now, the, 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 the converse is the Volkswagen Golf, which needs to literally be made, that platform, by the million, in a huge plant, highly automated, with thousands of robots, which costs billions, that is a massive, massive undertaking. And if you look at the, the, the path that Tesla has taken, it didn't start with a $25,000 car, it started with a high-end car, Roadster, then moved to a, still a relatively high-end car, Model S and Model X. It's only now that Tesla is mature enough and has access to enough capital that it can con contemplate making a, a, a car in the $25,000 price range. So what do we do? What does Lucid do? Because I think we're probably about realistically seven or eight years away from being able to do that in terms of our maturity as a company, in our ability to have access to that degree of capital. And again, as I say, even if we wanted to do that. And I think the solution could be that we license our tech to other car companies, it's maybe other car companies, it's maybe the, the Toyotas, the Hyundai's of this world that use Lucid's technology to make that $25,000 car. And that could happen three, four years from now. And what really excites me about this is this is where our efficiency with our ultra high voltage and our very advanced 
um, drive units with, with, with all the technology we've brought to bear can make that car super efficient. And that's where efficiency becomes an enabler for the mass adoption of electric cars. Such a car like that could potentially get close to what I think is the holy grail of about six miles per kilowatt hour. Wow. We could get to about six miles per kilowatt hour if we've got a more mature charging infrastructure. Then why carry the antidote to range anxiety on the car? Surely the car could have a smaller range and the antidote to range anxiety is a mature um, charging network. If we knew there were fast chargers on every street corner, why would we need more than 150 mile range on the car? And if we could get six miles per kilowatt hour and we only needed 150 mile range in the car, that would mean just a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack. And if we can mass industrialize through economies of scale, sell manufacture down to less than $100 per kilowatt hour, that 25 kilowatt hour pack at cell level would cost less than $2,500. Maybe we could see a pack at pack level, maybe $3,300. And that really becomes exciting. That is the path to this mythical $20,000, $25,000 mass market car. And this is where efficiency drives economies. And that efficiency is coming from the technology. This is a tech race. Yeah, it's not, it's not just one single company. Like you said, I think that one thing to, to really highlight throughout the whole thing is that to get to $25,000, it doesn't only have to be through Lucid. And yes. the, the brilliance of it is that you're going to be able to generate revenue, not only through selling your own vehicles, but selling your technology to others. Absolutely. And Absolutely. yeah, and a lot of people that are invest, invested into other companies that are just popped up and they're focusing on third parties to take care of their vehicles. I don't think people really understand the fact that that's going to really cause issues to even keep the company afloat. Because you're focusing on third party, third party, oh. your, your net revenue is very minimal. Very well, minimal. well, here's the thing. Here's, there's a case study. The most significant, most successful EV company in history is Tesla. And what is its approach? Vertically integrated manufacturing. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. And the, we, we take exactly the same approach here at Lucid. We've built the first uh, purpose-built EV plant in North America in Casa Grande in Arizona. We've built out phase one of that factory. We have a four-phase plan to take us through this decade. And we believe there is no substitute for vertically integrated manufacturing. We have to control our own destiny. I don't see any third party being as incentivized for success manufacturing our cars other than ourselves. And we have to take that responsibility. This is too critical to risk outsourcing. So no question. I, I can agree more. So with technology, like we we're talking about, um, there's been an epidemic that's really has affected the, the whole world in this, not just coronavirus, but also uh, the whole automotive industry. And it's been the nationwide semiconductor shortage. How has that affected Lucid and has it affected in any way? Mm. Well, the, the pandemic has definitely affected our ability to get the right quality parts to the factory uh, to, 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 to build, uh, our, 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 uh, to get the car into production as soon as I ideally would have liked. Mm -hmm. um, and that was very much a driver for our announcement that we go in the second half of this year. Uh, regarding the semiconductor shortage, where our supply chain is working assiduously on this to mitigate our risks. And it's something I've got my finger on the pulse of literally on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, now, there were some, some, some words that uh, Lucid really prepared for this kind of situation by uh, stockpiling semiconductors. Is that true at all? We did uh, to a certain degree buy ahead. And we're securing supplies for, for many of the chips on the car as best we can. Absolutely. So that foresight helped mitigate the risk. But we're all exposed to this. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not only Lucid, but it's many companies across the whole board, even Tesla. Tesla had to push back their $37,000 vehicle to potentially 2022. So understandable. Um, so 
Uh, with Lucid currently testing, testing release vehicles, uh, what phase in the safety inspections is Lucid in and has the safety crash test has been scheduled already or is it ha has already occurred? So we've got this all scheduled, as you'd expect. And um, the, the, the critical thing here with, with crash testing vehicles is that um, in order to sell a car, we have to self-certify so that the car is homologated as safe to sell. But that crash test program that we use for self-certification, those cars, it's no good using prototypes. You have to use cars which are representative of production process and production build. So by the very nature of the, uh, of the business, you only get cars which meet that criterion when you're very close to start of production because you don't have cars which are representative of production build until you're very close to actually being in production. Sure. So that is the process and that is the, the path that we're currently uh, on. Uh, but, but of course, over the last year or so, we've crash tested many of our beta prototypes uh, with some very successful results. Awesome. That's, that's very exciting. And yeah, I wouldn't want to test something that uh, that's not going to be released to the people yet. So understandable. Um, autonomy technology and LIDAR has been a big topic into the EV sector. Um, yeah. How does Lucid plan to have level four, or level five autonomy in the near future? And is there any safety protocols that you're going to ensure that the Lucid Air has uh, implemented? Well, Alex, I'm going to be straight up with you here. <laughs> uh, we've got no plans whatsoever to get level four or five anytime in the near future because that notion is a fantasy. <laughs> There's not, when, no one's going to have level four or five anytime in the near future. If you want to believe in fantasies, <laughs> good on you. But So we're launching with a level two, maybe a level two plus. Uh, we've got a, a great team uh, of ADAS and AD team here, led by Dr. Eugene Lee, uh, formerly of GM and really known as the father of GM Super Cruise. Um, we've got the car, or the Dream Drive system with 32 sensors, including LiDAR, 14 cameras, uh, short and long range radar, the most comprehensive sensor suite, which will ready the car for a level three upgrade through over the air software upgrade over that, which we hope to be able to do over the next couple of years after start of production. But realistically, level four and level five are quite a long way off. Absolutely. And with the, with the current crashes, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be need to upgrade their system as well as uh, ensure upgrade, upgrading and make sure the program works. So yeah. we take the, you know, we take the safety of this super seriously. Yeah, no question. Absolutely. You don't want to be on, on your side of a lawsuit. Um, so with the lighter technology, uh, how serious uh, is Lucid considering to work with, work or partner uh, with the likes of uh, Google, Apple, or Amazon on the software package as well as the autonomous technology? Oh, I'd love to do that because you know this whole software uh, um, endeavor to get to a high level of autonomy to get to a level four or five because I do think it'll happen. It's not a case of that I don't believe that will ever happen. It's a case of when it will happen, not if. Now, the very best estimates here in Silicon Valley, where I'm, I'm speaking from, are that just that software piece could take 10 years and $10 billion. Now, that's frankly beyond the, the budget that I have at my disposal. I can do an awful lot regarding expanding the growth of electric cars for $10 billion. So I think there's a lot of pragmatists in me. It would be great if we could partner. I think we've got to have the most advanced car in the world in Lucid Air with the most advanced integrated sensing suite with 32 sensors with two terabytes of onboard data. We've got an ethernet ring, a gigabit superhighway, a nodal redundant gigabit ring in the car. No one else has that. Super connected car. This is the ideal platform for flashing over the air the most advanced iterations of AD software. And I think partnership could be a good route future uh, forward, but we, we, we're yet to pursue that. Let's get the car into production first. That's my approach. Absolutely. Understandable. Um, that's really that, that's a really good question. So I appreciate you answering that. Answering that. Um, 
what are the Lucid's plans for international expansion? Uh, you've mentioned in the past you desire to expand manufacturing to Saudi Arabia and China. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about Saudi Arabia in particular. Uh, are there any updates that you can provide on that situation? Uh, well, uh, not at the moment. No, no precise updates, but absolutely we want to be a, a major player internationally with more than one plant in the world in the future. And that's very much part of the plan. But I, I, I do want to reinforce this. We will always see uh, Casa Grande as the mothership. That's where we develop the most advanced processes from which they can cascade into other plants, such as maybe the Middle East and certainly China in the future. Okay. Yeah. Um, understandable. Because you got to focus, again, it's all purely focused. You can't focus, um, you got to take care of home here and then as expand. You want need to make sure first. Yeah, exactly. Um, many potential investors are focused on Lucid being purely uh, an automotive company. Um, understandable. <laughs> and we talked about technology, but could you cover what other products Lucid plans to produce if there are any timelines set as, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the vision for the, the company is uh, that we create the Lucid group of companies and there will be three divisions. There'll be cars, um, energy storage and technologies and technology applications. So I think that um, Lucid Air is the first example of our cars. Then we're going to have gravity and, and, and a whole bunch of cool products over the next decade. Uh, with energy storage, we've already got the first um, ESS system hooked up and running here in our headquarters. Uh, we recently connected a small solar farm, a pilot solar farm from the roof of our building to that. That's all connected up and operational. We're accruing data from that. The next baby step will be to make a beta prototype and install that in our factory in Arizona. And then we go from there. So I think our energy storage systems and big data that we're going to accrue from that is going to be huge. But because we've got two-way charging through our Wonderbox technology, we will be able to do a whole bunch of interesting stuff with the cars themselves, using the cars as an energy storage system. And we're going to do um, a uh, 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 an example, a trial here in our headquarters of peak shaving using Lucid Airs in the car park. And I want to get this done the, before this year is out, this peak shaving uh, trial to show how we can balance the grid, take the peak energy usage out of the system here in California. That's very important for making the, bit, the, the grid more robust. And it will also save us as a business. So when there are peak demands from the business in the building, that's when the cars in the car park, instead of charging, they will be discharging through the wonder box into the building. And our cars, our lucid airs, will be contributing to the building's energy draw and therefore demanding less from the grid. And I think this is going to be a really useful addition to the repertoire of the car in the future. Absolutely. And, 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 then, and then the third division is our technology. Uh, as you know, we currently supply with a sole battery supplier to the World Championship electric race car series. Mm -hmm. And just I just hope there's going to be so many licensing applications with other, not just car companies, but other industries for our technology. And I'm particularly excited about eVTOL aircraft application. Absolutely. And a lot of them have actually gone, pu gone public uh, through SPACs and they're they're, they're not really going to production until 2025, which plenty of time for the batteries to be worked on and actually get that partnership in the future. So that's very exciting. Absolutely, Alex. And I mean, when you think if you're doing an EV tall aircraft as a small company, as a, if, you, if you've recently spacked, I mean, that is an enormous undertaking. Why take on the additional burden of developing in-house your own integrated electric propulsion system for that aircraft? Why not use a Lucid system, a turnkey solution? Absolutely. And you have to have the most efficient. If you, if you, again, you, again, everything it needs to be small and you take up less space to have more passengers as well as last longer. You don't want that dead, dead space or, like you said, dumb range. And, 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 and mass is the great driver, of course, with ET, EV tool. So it's the gravimetric energy density for the battery pack and the gravimetric power density for those drive units. Absolutely. Well, 
that's all the questions I have, Peter. And uh, again, we really appreciate you taking your time as well as the loose team take your time to uh, number one, accepting this, this interview, as well as uh, answering your questions and setting up a great little setup behind you by having that lucid air dream. That's that ain't a green screen. That's a real vehicle. Is, so, do you want me to prove it? I'll, yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll, go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll prove it. Check it out guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> there you Alex, go. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me on. I have enjoyed the dialogue hugely. All right. Thank you so much, Peter. I really appreciate it. And you take care. All the best. Bye-bye.